Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll see how to work on the reference functions. Now, reference functions are basically not doing anything into that particular cell, but they are trying to take a help of the nearby cells. Okay, so that is what the reference functions main idea is. So we have many functions in the reference functions. We have offset, indirect, address, column columns, row rows and the choose function. So let's see those one by one. I'll first select the offset function. Now the name itself says as offset. So what it will do is it will try to take the values after some rows and columns. Okay, not the current row, but after leaving some rows and columns, whichever value is there, it will take up. For example, my cursor is in the cell number A2. Okay, what if I want to see what is the value three rows down, two columns right, three rows down, okay, and two columns right. So the value is how much? 1034. See what I said is three rows down and next is two columns right. So here I'll write a function named as offset equal to offset. So right now my cursor is in this cell number A2. So I want from that particular cell A2 comma, it's asking number of rows. So I'll type as three rows down comma two row, two columns on the right hand side and I can just close the bracket. So when I press enter, I'm expecting the answer as 1034. So when you press, you can, you can see the answer is given as 1034. Okay. Once again, let us give a try. Now from this particular cell, let's say Feb, I want uh, three rows down, one, two, three, and one column right. So that is 691. From this Feb column, three rows down, okay, and one column right, that is 691. So I have equal to offset tab. I have this reference comma three rows down and one column right close the bracket when you press enter and you can see the answer is given as 691 okay so that is the offset usage okay now at any point of time if you think you don't want only one cell but you want you know two rows and two columns like this value you can use the other parameters okay like this so here if you observe i have a4 comma 3 comma 1 comma, I can say I want a height of two cells. So I'll put two comma, I want width of two columns. So I'll put as two and close the bracket. So when you press enter, you'll see you are getting as no value because everything cannot come into one place. So we have to use some other functions. So therefore, what I've done is I have ignored this two height and row and I've just kept as reference rows and comma columns. So you can press enter here. Okay. So reference or you can say as offset function. I hope you have understood what is the meaning and usage. Indirect function. Now indirect is very much useful. Okay. What indirect function will do? Let us see that. I have uh, written some data at this place. If I select this cells like 10 to 45, whatever the name is given as scores. That's a name range. What I've given as scores. Now I have written that scores into some cell that is B6. Okay, that's a cell number B6 here. Same way, if you observe, I have written some text into cell number C2 and in cell number B1, I have written as C2. Now, just tell me a single, a simple answer. If I type equal to B1, what I'll be getting? So, if I type equal to B1 as the formula, I'll be getting the answer as C2. Okay, so which is absolutely correct. Whatever values is kept into this C2 cell number, that is the answer I'll be getting. But instead of this one, if I type here as equal to indirect B1. So what is equal to indirect B1? So it will say that is not a value. That is nothing but a name range. Whatever value is kept into cell number B1, that is a name range. That is not a value. So when you press enter, you can see what is happening is you're getting as Akkad Gill, the company name you're getting it. So if I just double click here, it, it gives us equal to indirect and cell number B1. So basically indirect is a function which will try to fetch the reference. Okay. That is something given as name range. So when I press enter, what it says is in B1 cell number, there's a value given as C2. So C2 is not a value. C2 is a reference to some cell number. Okay. Therefore you get the answer. Same way, if I type as equal to sum bracket open and uh, if I select the cell number, close the bracket. 
So what I'll be getting the answer as equal to some b6, I think you'll be getting as zero. Okay. But if I say equal to some indirect of cell number b6. So now my function will understand my Excel will understand that uh, cell number b6 is having some, you know, name range, that name range is not a value, it is a name range, as I said, so it will try to add those sum, okay, of that range. So when I press enter key, and if you see, I'm getting 120. So basically, this particular cells are been getting added here 120. Now you might be asking why these are added, because this cells are given some name as scores, I have written it separately at some location, I am using it into a function using the method as indirect. Okay. Instead of this using it, I can also use equal to sum directly I can write as scores. Okay. That is also possible or else I can use indirect in this particular cell, whatever values is given that is a name range. So you can press enter from your keyboard. Both are one and the same. Okay. So that is the indirect function. It will be very much useful when you're go going for, uh, you know, dependent drop-down list. Dependent drop-down list will require this indirect function. Okay. Next one, we have the address function. What is address function here? You give the row number, you give the column number, it will give you the address. Okay. So if I ask you what is column one and row one, so you might tell me as A1. Okay. A1 is the column number, I mean the cell number. If I ask you row number two and column number two, so you might tell me the answer as B2, row number two and column number two, okay. But we have a function named as address, okay, which will give you the address of that particular, you know, position. So if I type equal to address, and when you open the bracket, you can see you have this row number, comma, column number. So I have the row number already written, put a comma, and you can select this column number, close the bracket. So when you press enter, you can see you're getting dollar a one, dollar a dollar one. And when you drag and fill, you'll be getting the answer here. Okay. So if you see here, I'm getting as row number 20, column number two. So that is nothing but uh, the cell number B20, dollar B12, dollar 20. So this is how you can work with this references or you can say as address. Now there's one more twist here. I'll just right click insert. right click insert address here. What is the another method is one more option here. I'll try to write the same function equal to address, pick up row number, comma, pick up the column number, comma. And now the third option, the third parameter, that is nothing but absolute number. Now you might have heard about the references in Excel. We have absolute references, relative reference, and also the mixed reference. So if you select one, it will give you the absolute reference. If you select two, it will give you, you know, absolute row relative column. So these are four different numbers. Have a look on that. Instead of manually typing, I have written here in the column. So I'll pick up from this location, close the bracket, press control, enter. Now, if it is one as the absolute number, you'll be getting as absolute reference. Now, if I drag down, see what is the change I'm getting. If the number is given as two, the column would be open, row would be fixed. If the number is three, column would be fixed and row would be open. If number is given as four, it is nothing but named as relative reference. Okay. If it is four, it is nothing but relative reference. So remember, I have already given the column numbers and row numbers, but absolute numbers is also important. If you want to have the exact, you know, reference or you can say as the address of the cell number. So that is the address function. Okay. It might be useful in your company. The next one we have as the column functions. So column function, basically there are two functions. One is the column and second is columns function. If I simply type like this, only column without giving any reference. And if I press enter key from my keyboard, it says four. Now what is four? It says your formula, wherever you have written, the column number is four. If I write my formula here in this column, if I write equal to column, open and close the parenthesis, press enter. So it says the formula or the function where you have written is column number seven. Okay. But one more method is there. If you type equal to column like this, 
and you type the reference let's say c5 you type the column number also or the cell number it will tell you what is the column number of that particular cell so when i press enter it says 3 definitely c column belongs to third column itself right now you might be asking it is very simple we can do it manually also but imagine if i ask you the column number of this particular cell okay so equal to column open and close the bracket enter so the column number of this column is 16382 okay 16382 okay this is also easy method to work with next function we have as columns columns function will basically give you the count of the columns you have for example if i select this three how much is the columns i have selected so the answer you should get as three equal to columns i'll write the function equal to columns now i'll select c d e all three columns close the bracket and press enter so you see i'm getting the answer as three one more example equal to columns now i'll select this five columns close the bracket enter so here it says total there were five columns what you have selected okay the range what you have given okay so column function is basically used to display the column number in which you are working or whichever cell reference you give columns will give you the count of number of columns you have given in the reference okay that is nothing but the reference okay in the array same way if you understood the column function row function is again very simple if I type equal to row, open and close parenthesis, it will tell you which row number you are currently working. So my row number is nothing but 4. You can see that's a row number 4. But if you want, you can just give the cell number like this, equal to row, and you can pick up, let's say, G1, H1. So it says that is the first row number. Okay. And similarly, you can find out the number of rows you have selected. So I'll pick up rows, and if I pick up like this, n number of arrays okay n number of records so when i press enter it says there are total 11 records or 11 rows which are present into this particular array okay again you can press enter you can find out okay this columns and row functions will be useful when you're working with vlookup and hlookup functions okay columns and rows now the next one we have as choose function okay choose function is very interesting uh, now I have to give the number let's say I've given as number 3 so what is the position or what is the value on this position number 3 here it is given as March if I type here as 4 I should get the value here as given as April okay so this is possible with the help of choose function now you might be telling it is very difficult or very easy to you know work with the months part so it is easy working with the months part but imagine you have some other data let's say name of the companies or you have the product names or the location names that time you can use this choose function so equal to choose and it says the index number that's my index number comma and here if you see it will give you the value 1 value 2 value 3 value 4 and so on so manually you have to select one by one value so like this keep on pressing comma selecting cell numbers like this close the bracket so here when you press enter you will be getting as april if you type as 5 you will be getting as may 7 you will be getting as july so what i've done is basically i have just type as choose function the index number comma and values i have selected it one by one you know separated by comma so that is the only method by which you can work with the choose function okay we have some few methods but those are very lengthy and complicated the easiest one is this method right so when you press enter you'll be getting july okay so this is how choose function will work okay so i hope you have understood how we work on this particular reference functions we have seen many functions offset indirect address column columns row rows and the choose function i hope you have understood and that's all for this video A cat killed. Average is dead.